me through all this shit just to fucking kill Marco! Marco was my favorite! Fuck this shit! What are you gonna do? No, what are you gonna fucking do? Seriously. No, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna lie to me? Are you gonna fucking lie to me? Are you gonna lie to me? Are you gonna lie to me? Are you gonna lie to me? I'm done. Like, I'm so freaking tired of it. I'm like going absolutely freaking mad. I'm. I didn't expect to freaking get this big. And I didn't expect, like, my past and everything to get all out there. And Keemstar just keeps freaking. It's just constant barrage. Like, all my videos are like. I've been up for so long and I'm so stressed right now and it's just, I'm done. So there is a lot of people in my mentions saying, this happened a long time ago, drop it. And then there's a lot of other people in my mentions saying, you ruined Basher's life. So I'm obviously responding to the people that said that I ruined his life. So to the other people that are annoyed by talking about this subject, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the other fucking people that are crying in my mentions. The Basher story is very, very complicated because in one sense, Basher is innocent and in another sense, Basher is fucking guilty. When Basher was 19 or 20, he was arrested for having inappropriate conversations and relationships with a 14 year old, a 15 year old or a 13 year old. Nobody knows the age. This whole story came to light because when Basher was going to work for Sky Does Minecraft, they had to do a background check on him. And Jobless Garrett, who was working for Skyda's Minecraft at the time, found some shit on Basher. Found out that he was arrested for inappropriate shit with a minor. Jobless Garrett called the police station, and the police station allegedly told him that he was fucking around with a 13-year-old girl. Skyda's Minecraft confronted Basher about this many years ago on his back porch, where Basher admitted that it was true. Then years later, Basher uploaded a video and said that the girl was like 14 or 15, not 13. Now at the time, Basher was 27 and he was publicly dating a 17 year old girl known as Clara Babylegs. And when this story came out, more girls that were under the age of 18 came out saying Basher was flirting with them on Snapchat and other social medias. When this news came out, Basher lost his TV show and his 17 year old girlfriend who I think turned 18 at this point left him Clara baby legs and she left him because Clara confronted him and Basher said he didn't know how many underage girls he was flirting with throughout the years now later it was kind of discovered that Jablos Garrett may have been lying about what the police told him now I was reporting on Jablos Garrett and Skyda's Minecraft's claims and since they were not a hundred percent true I apologized to Basher but that didn't make Basher innocent. That didn't make him innocent. All these big YouTubers have had claims that Basher was 100% innocent. No, he wasn't. And now I'm getting tweets saying, well, you got the Basherverse story wrong. No, we didn't. Everything we reported on Basherverse is 100% true, okay? Everything we reported. Now, there were some YouTubers claiming that Basher got intimate with a 13-year-old girl. 17-year-old girlfriend with a 13-year-old girl. 17-year-old girlfriend, who all right? Was that true? I don't know, but we reported what they were claiming. We're not wrong. Drumlert's not wrong, all right? And for all these people that somehow think that, like Basher was like not involved with an underage girl, he was literally arrested for it. Like that's fact without 100% of like, I don't know how people have all of a sudden said, yeah, Basher was never guilty of anything. He was fucking arrested for this. Like he was guilty of something. He even admits it, right? On his YouTube channel. So look, dude, the problem and the reason why you have this opinion is because Grade said, 
uh, yeah, Keemstar ruined Basher's life, and that pa that pedo story was 100% wrong. And you just listen to him, all right? You don't seek the truth. You're not interested in the truth. You take what one person says, all right, and you form your opinion on one side of the story. That makes you a fucking follower. And I'm telling you, if you continue not to seek the truth, not to seek knowledge, not to seek, uh, you know, both sides of a story or of an event, then you are going to grow up to just be a fucking follower, and you're probably going to end up being a fucking loser. You're never going to succeed because you don't seek the knowledge to have the advantage in this world of other people. You don't seek to have the fucking heads up. You don't. You're just a follower. You're just a follower. Don't be one. Uh, Keemstar uploaded a video to Dromlert and it was called RuneScape Sex Offender Returns and it actually shows in the thumbnail you know, a picture of a guy that is you know, old with glasses and he talks about how there was this RuneScape guy who actually had sex with a teen. There was an article posted on New York Daily News. It says, Massachusetts man John Phillips had sex with a teen. He married an online game. And this was posted in 2011. And the whole story was that this guy, you know, had sex with a teenager. And then he got out of jail and then he started streaming on Twitch. And I guess that's because he kind of looks like the guy in the, the fucking article and stuff. But it wasn't him. It wasn't him at all. If you actually look at the crime report, you can see that the guy who actually did commit that crime with the, the whole RuneScape teen thing, he's still in jail. He's still in jail. He's in there for life, actually. So he's never getting out. And this guy is obviously out of jail. This guy's streaming on Twitch. So And he's been streaming on Twitch for a while, too. So I don't know why they just reported on it today. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, he's you can tell he tries really hard on his Twitch channel. And... Then, uh, you know, this video comes out, and, and this drama art comes out, and this dude was getting a lot of shit. Like, he was just so, so sad. Like, you could tell this dude was just beyond sad, because he started streaming tonight, and, like, his Twitch chat was just filled with people telling him to kill himself, filled with people telling him, you know, you shouldn't live on this earth anymore. Like, he, his life was basically ruined. He was just getting all these social media messages, and you can tell, like, the only thing in this, like, man's life right now is, like, Twitch and, and interacting with his Twitch fans and stuff. And he, in every one of his broadcasts, if you watch his past broadcasts, all he does is, like, talk to his fans and stuff. And he always says, like, happy birthday. He always, like, you know, congratulates them on something. He's always really nice to them. He's never doing anything, like, mean. He's just a genuinely nice dude. Okay, from what I gather here, you're saying that finally this guy who posted this video... He's taken the video down and admitted that what he said wasn't true. And that uh, now everybody in the world knows my real name is Tony Ray Winchester. I'm 62. I've retired. I'm, I'm, I haven't got my first Social Security check yet, but I'll get it soon. Uh, see, I would have sat here for the next 10 years. Uh... Because I'm not going to let somebody run me off. But now that the whole thing's cleared up, and you guys know I'm a good guy, I'd like to go take a break. Wash my face. Put some cold water on my face. Have a cup of coffee. Relax for a minute. And then I'll come back and start tweeting again. Or twi twitching again, okay? I I'm not calling him. I'm not telling him my phone number. I don't want that guy to bother me no matter what. I don't want his money. I don't want his apology. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, I know who and what I am. And my real friends know who and what I am. And they stuck by me. Thank you very much for everything. And, and don't think I'll ever forget all the nice words you folks had to say to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is this your manager? Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, because you know, you know. Hey, I can tell you one thing. My manager never got interviewed by Keemstar. Okay, I can tell you that. It's all fake news. I remember seeing one someone where weirdly there was back in classic. Yeah, fake news, fake news. That's right. It's all fake news.
manipulating you. I, hey, I've never even talked to him. How can, you know, I, I've never even talked to the guy. Do you understand? What more can I tell you, okay? Yeah. He's, uh, uh, but I know one thing for sure. The people who come from H3, H3 are a lot nicer than the people who come from Keemstar. Tony, I have ignored this for years. I'm not ignoring it anymore. When you make statements about me that are just so false, yesterday on stream you said for four years Keemstar's been sending people to, to attack me and harass me. False. Show proof. Show the proof of me sending anyone to attack you. It's just a blanket lie. You also said, that's my not my manager. I, I don't know that individual. That is fake news. You don't know Borg, really? The, the, the guy that managed you in 2016, the guy who I had to go through to get in contact with you, to play RuneScape, to get your phone number, to talk to you, you know, the guy that handled your affairs. Oh, you, all of a sudden, when he comes out and speaks against you, you just don't know him. I, I don't know, that that's fake news, guys. Even in this video here, you say, that's the second time that you slandered my name. Over what, what, details, talk, talk. No more lies, Tony, no more bullshit. In 2017, that that tweet that you put out, when you said, you know, I just want you to know, Keemstar, to this day, I'm still getting harassment because of you, right? It was in 2017, it was a year and a half after the whole incident happened, right? That was the same day, the same day that the catfishing story came out. It was the same day. It can be proven by anyone that looks this stuff up on the goddamn internet, all right? And this is what I keep saying to you. You're getting harassment from other situations and scandals that you're involved in and you're blaming them on me and you have been blaming it on me. This whole situation, in 2019 you uploaded, cause you've been flip flopping back and forth. 2019 you uploaded a video saying, I have no hard feelings about Keemstar, right? But then when Ethan contacts you, when he starts making this fucking video, all of a sudden you start uploading all these videos like, you know, this is what happened when Keemstar did this horrible thing to me. Dude, you just want clout. It's so simple for anyone to see. And I don't care if you're the nice old man and I'm the big bad Keemstar and no one's going to be on my side. I don't care if no one's on my side. I'm going to call you out on your fucking shit every time. All right. Let's talk facts. Let's talk facts and back those facts up instead of these blanket accusations that you can't fucking back up. And I'll meet you in that goddamn parking lot, old man. I don't give a fuck. Let me know is this fucking furry. This fucking furry that goes to furry conventions to get fucked in the ass by a 40-year-old fucking giraffe, giraffe man, little furry, that goes to furry conventions that gets fucked in the ass by 40-year-old giraffe men. This fuckboy, furry, that goes to furry conventions that gets fucked by 40-year-old men in giraffe suits in the ass, 18-year-old furry motherfucker who goes to furry conventions to get fucked in the ass by 40 year old giraffe suit wearing fucking gay dudes all right did this fucking furry dude who goes to furry conventions that gets fucked in the ass by fucking 40 year old men and fucking giraffe costumes this fucking idiot who fucking is a furry who goes to furry conventions who gets fucked in the ass by 40 year old men in giraffe fucking furry costumes we are dealing with a fucking idiot but not just an idiot a furry that goes to a furry conventions that gets fucked in the ass by 40 year old men in giraffe costumes who the fuck do you think you are oh wait i know who you are you're a furry that goes to furry conventions that gets fucked in the ass by 40 year old men in giraffe costumes beyond all that just remember one motherfucking thing about this dude. Remember one thing and never, ever, 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 ever forget it. Attica has lost his mind like the third time. Once again, for the final time, I am God and so are you. Oh my God. Wait, I'm God. I'm God. He's God. We're all God. Everything. It's it's all predestined, Keemstar. But the Everything scariest, you've done up until this point. But the scariest thing about thinking that the world is a simulation and it's predestined and all that is then there's no reason yeah. to live. Why not? Why do you fear death? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's that, it's 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 scary because if you really think about it, then why live? Just yeah. jump off a cliff. If if it's just a simulation, who cares? 
in on this platform and I've tried my best to not step on any toes. I've always tried my best to consider other people. I don't want to hurt anybody. I never wanted to, I always, I always shied away from whenever people would make fun of people. And it, it just felt bad. It's like, why would you tear that person down? Be nice to people. I know, I always thought I was weird because why would I never want to jump to hurting someone? I always just wanted to make content and have fun. And I yeah, realize I mean, now, you can, oh, you can, because... you can crack jokes about people and still have fun. It's not being mean. Yeah, but you're mean about it. You know, you're mean about it. You're uh, mean I mean, about it. Sometimes it, it, you're heartless. Sometimes I am mean about it, but it's still funny. Yes, but that's it's still it. funny. That's it's it. still funny. It is funny, though. Look, I do dark humor, and I don't kill people like you do sometimes. You record this and put it on drama alert at 12 tonight. It. I'm recording it right now. I'm recording it right now. <laughs> Oh my God, what a f that job. I don't want to make this video and I don't want to be sitting here defending myself, uh, but, but I have to because the internet's doing what the internet does. So, you know, a lot of people are looking for someone to blame for the, the Attica thing. And obviously I'm the target that they've picked and they're pulling up old tweets where, you know, I'm making some banter jokes um, about what was going on with Attica and these outbursts and stuff. And they're like, look, you're to blame, Keem, you're to blame. Um, but nobody goes and shows tweets where I'm generally concerned because that doesn't fit the narrative of, you know, you're the one to blame. I was generally concerned about what happened with Attica. And when I talked to Attica, he was fine. When I spoke to him privately, he was totally fine. And I guess people just don't understand that. And it wasn't just, I wasn't just taking his word for it. It was the doctors. Like if the doctors are talking to him and they're like, you're fine, let him go. Then what am I supposed to believe? If, if I'm talking to him and I'm getting the same impression that these are stunts and this is for publicity. And he's telling me like, look, look at my Twitter, look at my analytics, you know, my YouTube's blown up. If he, if we're having conversations like that, that are completely normal, but then when camera's on, there's this outburst, um, you know, what am I to believe? I, I spoke to his ex-girlfriend and I asked them like, or I asked her like, why is he, why were they letting him out of the hospital? And he was convincing the doctors that he was fine. And that's why they kept letting him out. So it was a combination of that. No, the other thing, I was talking to many other people that talked to him in the last two weeks and he convinced them that he was fine. He literally made plans with people for this summer. Like he was making plans this summer to hang out with different friends. Like people don't understand and they don't ask me questions. They just point the finger and say, you're to blame. And there's so much more that happened privately that just you guys don't understand. And I just want to mourn my friend. So please stop making me. So please stop making me defend myself is what I meant to say at the end of the other video and it's gonna get him views and he fucking tries to call me out for doing something wrong when every one of these little idiots agree with him and think you know what you're right you know what keemstar needs to stop the hard mentality making it seem like i'm getting people together to attack toby that is not what my fucking show does. My show is news. The people who I see that fucking roast people and get a ton of people to attack people is this fucking furry. This fucking furry that goes to furry conventions to get fucked in the ass by a 40 year old fucking giraffe, giraffe man, Pyro Syndical. He is the fucking leader of all this shit and he's trying to preach to me. To me! Stupid bitch! This stupid fucking justice! Oh fucking righteous fucking- I think it's funny. I've been laughing for the last hour that your mom died of cancer. I don't give a fuck about any of you. I am in this for your money and your money only. That's all I care about. Alright? I only do this show for money. That's it. Alright? I don't do it to entertain people. That's just a fucking scam. Uh, I don't give a fuck about any of you. I really hope you die of cancer. I hate every single one of you. Fuck the fans. No sarcasm. No joking. Fuck the fans. For the Xbox. Do you have an Xbox? Mm. No? Guess what? We got you an Xbox, too. And a controller. So you can play that game. Isn't that awesome? 
Cool. Give him back. You ready to do this? Mm -hmm. Hold him. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> They're gonna be yours. Why did you do this? To all of our fans of the Bad Kids Show, happy Thanksgiving. Jaden, this was just a joke. It was just for a video, okay? So, I got you some ice cream. Cool? <laughs> I'm sorry. What said about her then? It's right there, Scarce. We can't laughing. debate about this. Situation. It's there. Alright, let's listen to it again. He made like a full apology video. He was just, you know, really sad about it and stuff. And he obviously understood fucking video response to Keemstar. It's playing right now. It's playing right now. As a lot of you guys know, Keemstar's daughter is only six years old. And basically what he said is Keemstar's daughter is going to grow up to suck dick. And he was saying a bunch of bad things about his daughter, about how she's going to be stupid. Why are you laughing, bro? Why are you laughing? Why are you fucking laughing over I said it was harassment only a few seconds later. We can like... One in the chat if he laughed. One in the chat if he laughed. Oh my god, dude. This is he so laughed. Fucking... You just did. You, you, dude, you, you literally attack people almost every single day on Twitter. Probably more than that. You attack. Yeah, but I attack people with facts, right? This is how you're attacking me with false how, shit. How is making you a video? You told how is all video? your subscribers, all your viewers, that I picked on a kid because his grandpa died. Those are your words, quote unquote, and it wasn't true. And this is what I say to anybody that I get in a beef with, Scarce, and you should know this by now. You can come at me with lies. You can hit me with all that stuff, but I will destroy you with the truth. And I'm destroying you with the truth right now. It's right there. We just played it for everyone to hear. You tweet at me, you're not news, and then you fucking block me? Why? Oh, I've never even fucking said anything about you at all. Like... Now I want to. Now I want to be like, hmm, can't wait to report your death. <laughs> like, seriously, what's wrong with you, asshole? Response from Eric Sharkey that said, fuck you and your ugly ass daughter. We responded by saying, if you're not kicked from air for attacking a five-year-old girl, Air Sharkey, then air is a joke of a team. Fave if you agree. Now, many people favored, but the official air Twitter responded with this get cancer 40 year old faggot to me we responded by saying really i think you might be losing sponsors after my report on drumler air as a team good game another air member said this kill yourself and your daughter and then another air member said your daughter is a sex slave the cancer victim